Okay, this is uh, Drew again, and uh, unfortunately, um, I recorded a video of uh, um, trying to convert these uh, old fluorescent bulbs into LEDs, and uh, this is the best video, but I had the stereo up too loud, and it's very annoying, so I am here narrating over the video now. Hopefully, it, you know, it's not going to sound... I don't like watching videos like this, but, you know, if you've got one of these lights, I haven't seen anything on YouTube that'll lead you through converting it to uh, LED. Because this is not a normal fluorescent light with a ballast inside. So here I'm showing you some things you might need, like a power supply to do some testing. A lux meter you don't really need for doing this, but... Digital soldering gun, nice thing to have. Um, voltage tester, I don't know where my voltmeter is, I don't see it on there. And some goodies that I took out from previous lights. A little block of wood for soldering. Some connectors, you might need two types of connectors for doing this. Okay, and uh... Now this is the, the middle of the uh, lamp, the fixture, and you notice here that how small it is, how thin and shallow it is, and that's a good clue that there's not going to be a ballast underneath. So here I get the video camera sitting up on a tripod and um, showing the side I'm working on. So um, I'm taking out the middle section here. small it is, how narrow it is, not like most fluorescent fixtures. And I don't know what you call this type. I read everything on the box. There's nothing to let you to lead you to believe that it's a fluorescent fixture without uh, a ballast. Which incidentally there are zillions of videos on YouTube on how to convert them and there's nothing on this. So here's a little plastic chip that's in the um, center, a little plastic case surrounding a chip that's uh, just got a few uh, resistors on it and a and capacitor. And I don't have any idea what all this stuff is doing. Here's another bunch of junk. You'll see this in a minute, but this is <laughs> from the first few lights that I converted. This is the fourth one. So, you start out by taking this uh, end cap off, which is uh, not an easy task. So if you have these, these shop lights are brand new. Um, brand new, never used. Uh, I gave a lot of these away when I uh, uh, converted to halogen bulbs, and I have another video on converting halogen to LEDs. But this is uh, just, you know, non-ballast fluorescent here. So these end covers here are made out of lexin. That's what it says on the cover, and lexin's a pretty tough plastic. You know, it's a polycarbonate, so it's pretty tough. Um, so getting it off of the uh, metal fixture is an easier way to deal with this here. And I'm showing you here, it's almost impossible to get this thing apart. You can see a couple of small tabs in here that uh, normally are the tabs that if you just like push them in a little bit, um, they're kind of, you know, arrowhead shaped on the end. And, uh, you know, if you move them aside, you can get the pieces apart. But the problem here is the, the little tab sticking out is wider than the actual slot that it goes into. So that's not going to work. <laughs> this is not made to come apart. So you just need a big screwdriver. and uh, You need to pry in here and, and try to just turn the sc screwdriver sideways and leverage the thing apart. And it's a little bit of a struggle. And, you know, this is my fourth light. So, you know, this is after I got the hang of it. So, <laughs> but anyways, if you put the screwdriver in like this, you'll save a lot of time and um, just try to leverage the thing out. So there, one side came unsnapped. I'm trying to show you what's going on with the plastic piece, but it's better if you have a uh, photographer, you know, than sitting something on a tripod. It's awful hard to to do. And now I'm going to get the other side out. 
it's a little easier getting the second side out because you have more room to get a screwdriver into or pry. Makes them off pretty easy. So here's what you have. You have the uh, end plastic cap. Here I'm showing you how small that slot is. Well, the, the tabs and then the slots are on the other piece. But the tab is actually wider than the slot. <laughs> so the only way to get it to, to get it apart is from the inside. Now there's a coil here um, and another what looks to be um, a capacitor or something. Um, you just cut all this garbage out. So this is what this la lamp has in place of a ballast. It has all this electronic stuff. And this is a T12 fixture. T12 is almost the same as T8, so the new LEDs require a T8. Um, but you can get by with this. and. Uh, talk about this in a minute. I, I need to show you something. I had that motorcycle battery there as a power supply to test some continuity and I'll explain that after this video is done. But if you have the same lamp you don't need to worry about it. So what I'm doing now is just uh, cutting some wires. You see a black wire and a red wire running to the other end. Y you only need one wire to run to the other end and it should come off of the power, which I'm not working on the powered end right now, I'm working on the dummy end. So this is where the common wire goes. So all we need to do is uh, connect these two middle wires together. It doesn't really matter what two wires you connect together. The other one has to run to the other end and then the last t um, wire has to just be terminated. So there I just cut one off. I was going to leave it there, but I think I capped it. So now the middle two wires you connect together, and that just you know so the power comes in on the you know or this in this case the common wire comes in on one end of this um, uh, fixture here, this little piece of plastic feeds power to the bulb, and then you know the power from the other end of the bulb is uh, goes to the second wire or goes to the second socket. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, you, you know you just as you see here, I'm connecting the two middle ones together because both those wires are kind of short, but they're long enough to connect together. And this is where you can use those new new connectors come in pretty handy for this. New style connectors. So the other two, it doesn't matter which one you use, one of them is going to be dead and the other one's going to go to the other end. So I'm using it. So I, I cut the black one, I cut the red one off and here I'm putting a cap on the red one. Not that it's going to touch anything but plastic inside there, but a cap on the end. Now you just snap this thing back together. So in other words, you take it apart, you gut it, you connect the two metal wires together, and you terminate one of the outside wires, and the other one runs to the other end as you're common. <laughs> but anyways, just get the wires out of the way and snap the thing back together and it'll be okay. Just connect the middle two together and the two outside ones. One of them is terminated here and the other one goes to the other end to the common. And snap this thing back together. It actually goes back together pretty easy. Uh, it, you know, it takes a you might have to use pliers, but if you've got strong hands, you can snap it. It just snaps really hard. And after you snap it together, you just put it back on the metal, give it a good pounding, and it's set. Now we're ready to do the other end. Work. Now the other end is where the power cord comes in. So you do basically the same thing, except for you know, one end you got to, you know, use on the other end of the power cord. So the power cord, you know, it doesn't matter which one's which, but the hot would go to this end, and then the common would go to the wire you have running to the other end that you just did. Okay, same struggle here trying to get this thing apart. It's just not an easy thing. Just, you know, try to separate the pieces enough to get a screwdriver in there. And uh, pry it apart. It 
take some effort too. This one seemed to come apart really easy. So on this one I'm leaving the end cap on, which is a good idea. I tried to do that with the other ones too. The reason I didn't the last time was to try to show you those snaps. So again, we got the stuff here. We take that coil out and the big uh, thing that resembles a capacitor, but I don't really know what it is. Maybe it's a resistor. It's just a, I didn't really take it apart, or I didn't really look at it that well. The silver thing. So, removing the coil here, and just you know, cutting the wires close to the garbage that you're throwing away because you need all the wire length that you can get here. The same deal here. I'm going to strip these two metal wires. And, uh, you can see there the, the power supply. The, the power cord that's coming in, one of them is headed down toward the other end. Um, but it went into that little plastic thing, so I cut it off. So we're going to have to reconnect it to the other end. And here we're stripping the two middle wires to connect them together. that connector away where the coil used to be. Now like I said here, you've got here you've got a red wire and a black wire here. Doesn't matter. One wire has to be connected to the other end, the other one has to be connected to the power supply. It doesn't matter how you do it. So here I'm cutting off the red wire and the black wire Not sure which one I'm going to use here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, just give power to one end and the other end you terminate. So here I terminated the red one. So the black one is going to be connect connected to the hot wire coming in. I guess I changed my mind. You can't get these things apart. They just take a little bit of effort. Why did I do that? No. Well, I think I decided here to connect the uh, power supply to the red, um, just so people, nobody's going to open this lamp up ever. So the inside of it is, uh, you know, I just, I guess I just wanted to connect a black wire to a black wire, and I just used a red wire here for the power. Normally red doesn't mean power unless you're 230 volt. <coughs> so this way the black wire coming out of here connects to the other black wire. And I think I'm going to get a uh, twist on. Um, yeah, the power cord here, um, it's, it's a braided copper wire. So you can't use those new style fittings. So, you know, it's best to use a, a screw cap. But when I use screw caps, I solder the wire together. So here I'm putting a little flux on it. Got the soldering gun on. I can see the blue light there. And I picked up the solder. So these digital soldering guns, you know, I have them set to 375, which is typical. Of, I mean, I use this most of the time on uh, electric circuit boards to uh, remove things like capacitors and, you know, other anything, any kind of chip that you want to take out of a circuit board. You can set this to 375, and that's what's nice about these is they don't, they won't damage the circuit board. There's not enough heat. There's enough heat to, you know, melt the solder. But other than that. You know, you don't need to worry about it. So I got these two soldered together, and I'm going to put a regular cap on it. And, uh, now we just have to tuck things away. Just 
find some place to tuck it. Look at the uh, the ridges of the plastic here. You don't want to have a wire crossing them because they go into the other side. So basically, you just snap it back together. Don't want the wire coming too close. Stick it back. Plugging the uh, soldering gun and a little bit of effort to snap these back together. And almost done now. So now all I need to do is uh, connect the wire that was running you know, the common wire, the one that, you know, part of the power cord that you didn't connect to this end, you need to connect the other part of the power cord to the far, to the wire coming from the far end. And then I have a, a black wire here that I didn't terminate. Um, I'm just going to terminate it on the outside. So now I'm moving this thing down. Get a wire stripper out here. So I'm connecting the wire, the, the common wire, to the wire coming from the other end. So in other words, you, you connect the hot wire to all the terminals on one end, and you connect the common to all the terminals on the other end, <coughs> which is a lot different than the way a fluorescent setup. On a fluorescent lamp, you need to connect the hot to one end and the, the hot and cold to the same terminal on the same end. This one here is just one end of these LEDs is hot, and the other end is common. So here I'm just terminating this wire. <coughs> and we're basically done. So it's not that bad, but you know, it's not as easy as a removing a ballast. So I'm going to, I have four of these, um, and then I'm going to need, I, I have a lot of LED lights in the shop, and a lot of halogen lights to be converted to. Um, but, uh, I'm going to have to buy two more fluorescent lamps. They're, they're about $13 a piece at Lowe's or Home Depot. Now I'm picking up some of these LEDs. Trying to figure out here. It looks like there's a plastic on one I peeled off, but you know, it's I think it's just this white stuff that's starting to delaminate. But these things don't get warm, it doesn't matter. Now, the way these go in, uh, this one's damaged a little bit. You can see the dents in the back. So I'm wondering if it's going to work. And all the ones that were on one side of the uh, packaging got dented like that. I'm going to have to send these guys a picture. But, you know, it didn't really, it doesn't really bother the light any because these LEDs are... Now here I, <laughs> I have a little bit of trouble <laughs> when I'm plugging this thing in. And the reason is because if you plug in a soldering gun, it doesn't it doesn't make the light go on. <laughs> oh, here I got it right. I, maybe that was the last one I was plugging in the wrong thing. So this is it. This is done. Now I'm going to add a couple pictures here at the end to show you um, what kind of possible connections you can have, and uh, that'll about do it. But you know these things without a ballast are just a struggle to get taken apart. Same deal, you remove the junk.